Good morning. Welcome to all of you who have joined us as we celebrate the 26th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Let us pray for each other's intentions. Please remember at Mass all who are ill, confined to their homes and hospitals or nursing homes, as well as those on our parish prayer list. Our Bishop's Fund Appeal activity is coming to a close. If you have not yet made a gift or pledge, please pray about your decision. To everyone who has made a gift or pledge on behalf of Bishop Lavalley, we thank you. There will be a second special collection next weekend for the relief effort in Haiti. Funds collected will allow Catholic Relief Services to continue its humanitarian aid to the people of Haiti. Please give graciously. There is very important information in this week's bulletin regarding offertory envelopes. So please pick up a bulletin after Mass. And today's Mass is offered for Krista Ocker. Our entrance hymn is on your leaflets. Gathered in, we will sing the first three stanzas. Please stand.
A reading from the book of Numbers. The Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to Moses. Taking some of the spirit that was on Moses, the Lord bestowed it on the 70 elders, and as the spirit came to rest on them, they prophesied. Now two men, one named Elad and the other Medad, were not in the gathering, but had been left in the camp. They too had been on the list, but had not gone out to the tent. Yet the Spirit came to rest on them also, and they prophesied in the camp. So when a young man quickly told Moses, Elad and Medad are prophesying in the camp, Joshua, son of Nun, who from his youth had been Moses' aide, said, Moses, my Lord, stop them. But Moses answered him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the people of the Lord were prophets? Would that the Lord might bestow his spirit on them all. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. James. Come now, you rich, weep and wail over your impending miseries. Your wealth has rotted away, your clothes have become moth-eaten, your gold and silver have corroded, and that corrosion will be a testimony against you. It will devour your flesh like a fire. You have stored up treasure for the last days. Behold, the wages you withheld from the workers who harvested your fields are crying aloud, and the cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. You have lived on earth in luxury and pleasure. You have fattened your hearts for the day of slaughter. You have condemned. You have murdered the righteous one. He offers you no resistance. The word of the Lord. sisters, the Lord be with you. With Listen now to a reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to, you. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone driving out demons in your name, and we tried to prevent him because he does not follow us. Jesus replied, Do not prevent him. There is no one who performs a mighty deed in my name who can at the same time speak ill of me. For whoever is not against us is for us. Anyone who gives you a cup of water to drink because you belong to Christ, amen, I say to you, will surely not lose his reward. Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin It would be better for him if a great millstone were put around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life maimed than with two hands to go into Gehenna, into the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life crippled than with two feet to be thrown into Gehenna. And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. Better for you to enter into the kingdom of kingdom of God with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into Gehenna, where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. Brothers and sisters, the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Whoa, Jesus is a, is a little harsh this morning, isn't he? If your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. If your foot causes you to sin, cut that off too. Oh my goodness. Is he, is he really serious about this? 
Well, well, of course not. You know, Jesus is using symbolic language, hyperbolic language. He's exaggerating a little bit to teach us something about sin. Because, you know, if you really meant for this to happen, we, we would be a funny-looking bunch here, wouldn't we? <laughs> I know I would be. I wouldn't have any hands or feet. Vaughn, Vaughn uh, he, he wouldn't be able to play the organ with no hands. We wouldn't have an organist here. <laughs> but like I said, Jesus is using hyperbolic language. He's exaggerating to teach us about sin and the consequences of sin. Especially for the community, the, 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 the community of faith, the community of believers. One person might sin, but it's the whole community that, that suffers. And so he's calling us, each and every one of us, to take charge of our lives and make whatever changes that we have to make in order to live the life that he wants us to live. That's a life of discipleship, a life of following Jesus and using all of our gifts and our talents and our very lives to build up his kingdom here on earth. But sometimes, and we all know it too, sometimes it can feel like cutting off a part of ourselves when we, when we try to break a harmful habit that we've been trying to break for a long time. Or we, we try to, to simplify our lives so we can have more time for others. Or maybe re- reducing our material excesses so that we we can help others who have less than ourselves. Or maybe focusing less on ourselves so so we can be more attentive to those immediately around us. We need to to open our eyes and our ears to the larger world of the poor, the suffering, and the marginalized. But sometimes we allow ourselves to get in the way. Right? Right? And so making significant changes in our lives can feel like major surgery, or Jesus puts it, chopping off a hand or a foot or plucking out our our eyes. And who wants to do that? Well, we do, right? We do if if we've heard Jesus' invitation to, to follow him. And we're talking about here our our spiritual eyes and our hands and our feet here, right? And we can do that because at each and every Eucharist, we we are again offered transforming grace, right? And once once again, what is grace? Grace is that free gift. There's nothing that we could do or, or, or say to earn that free gift of God's love, his mercy, and his strength to be those disciples that that he calls us to be. (laughs) A couple of weeks ago, um, I was puttering around in my my secretary's office in in, uh, Ticonderoga, um, and uh, I was making copies there, and uh, if you've ever been there, uh, you, you'll know that there's a fireplace in the corner of the room. And, uh, and on top of the mantle above the, the fireplace is a small stone statue of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Uh, and Jesus is clothed in white, and his heart is exposed, you know, symbolizing his love for, for each and every one of us. And his arms are spread open just like this, as if to say to the whole world, hey world, look at me. Look at, look at how much I love you. I love you so much that I'm going to die on that cross for you. Now, the, the, <laughs> the other interesting thing about this statue is that it's missing its right hand. You know, somehow, maybe years ago, it, it fell off the, the mantelpiece, it fell to the ground, and, and, the, and the hand popped off. But they, they didn't get rid of the statue. Instead of that, they... They, they picked it up and they, and they put it back on the, the, the mantle and it's still there today. And I'm thinking, you know, this statue is broken. Why would you want to keep it? 
It's damaged. And then it hit me. What what a, a powerful reminder to a broken person just like me. A broken people, a broken world, broken by neglect, sickness, pain, poverty, even broken by sin. That that Jesus loves us this much. He he loves us this much that that he's not afraid to expose his heart with us, share that heart with us, open his arms this way to embrace us. And also, not only calling us in our own brokenness, but calling us to be his hands to be that missing right hand in this world today. Sharing sharing his healing and love to another broken person, broken people, and a broken world. And, and this, again, this again is, is where this transforming grace from the Eucharist comes in again, most especially, by the way. Because, you know, think about it. When you, when you come up in, in these lines to receive Holy Communion... What do I or the, or the communion minister says when he raises up that host to you? What does he say? Say it louder. The body of Christ. He's giving you the body of Christ. And that should be a reminder to all of us that when we receive the body of Christ and we place it on our tongues and we consume it, we become the body of Christ. Now think about what that means. That means, you know, we... We become his eyes, his hands, and we become his feet. And those above and beyond all the gifts and the talents that I mentioned earlier that that God has, has given us to use to build up his kingdom on earth, those three are the most important gifts and tools that we all have, each and every one of us have, to do that work. But oftentimes we, we neglect those gifts, don't we? You know, when, when, we, when we see somebody in need or we've heard about someone in need, how often have we maybe looked the other way? Or ran away? Or we didn't use our hands to lift them up and offer them support? But the beautiful thing about the Eucharist here is, and this is the point that Jesus is making in that gospel, is that each and every time we receive Holy Communion, we become his body and we allow Christ to graft himself onto us. And we're grafted onto him. And instead of of looking away or running away and not using our hands to lift others up in need, Christ's eyes become our eyes. His feet become our feet. His hands become our hands. And we use our eyes to give that person our undivided attention. We use our feet to to run to the rescue. We use our hands, his hands, to lift them up and to give them whatever they need. We are literally grafted on the arms of the risen Lord Jesus Christ and we become his body, his eyes, his hands, and his feet, ready, ready to share his healing and his love to a broken person, a broken people, a broken world. Are you ready today to allow Jesus to do that for you, to transform you? to transform your bodies, your eyes, your hands, your feet, your heart, your voice. If you are, then as you come up in these aisles today to receive the body of Christ, be ready to say amen. Amen?
Amen. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God and God, light and light, true God and true God, the God did not made, unsubstantial of God. Through him, all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, he was incarnate with the Virgin Mary and became a man. For the sake of his crucified and conscious pilot, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will not have been. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one, the holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now together use our eyes to look to our Heavenly Father, um, Praying for all of our needs, praying for the needs of the world, our families, and for one another. For all priests who have ministered faithfully throughout our lives and the life of this parish, that they may know our appreciation on the Priesthood Sunday, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation, that we may always strive to live up to our ideals and work for the common good, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the graces of clarity and active response and the discernment of our Heavenly Father's will, for all those considering a vocation to the priesthood or consecrated life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those in need, that they may find guidance and assistance from the many services available through our generous support of the Bishop's Fund of Appeal, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who suffer due to violence or poverty, May God bring them peace and consolation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Krista Ocker and Henry Roth, may God's eternal peace be with them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all gathered here, may the love of Christ shine through us in our work of spreading the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the things that we worry about, which we hold in the silence of our hearts, Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we ask you to hear us and answer us. In the name of your Son, our Savior Jesus, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our offertory hymn is on your leaflet and continues on the reverse side. God, whose purpose is to kindle.
Let us stand to pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O merciful God, grant us that this, our offering, may find acceptance with you, and that through it, the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praise has had nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. Lord, you are indeed holy, and you are the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, and giving it to his disciples. He said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. We Proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. And we pray humbly that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Terry, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. 
Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, St. Bernadette, and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. As we stand as God's family, let us also join together our our hearts and our voices, praying in the words that our Lord Jesus Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, deliver us, we pray, from all evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, both now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on our faith and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the risen Lord be with all of you. Let us offer each other now a sign of that peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen.
Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless us, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The celebration is ended. Let us go forth in peace, glorifying the Lord with our eyes, our hearts, our hands, and our feet. Have a great week, everybody. Our reflection hinges on your leaflet in Christ. There is no Easter away.